أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Lesson number 149 Surah Al-Isra We'll begin from ayah 101 وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى تِسْعَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ And we had certainly given Musa a.s. nine evident signs He wasn't given just one miracle He wasn't given two miracles He was given nine signs which were very clear for the people. We have learned in the previous ayat that the mushrikeen of Makkah demanded miracles from the Prophet ﷺ. And they asked various types of miracles. That only when we see this, then we will believe. And to the point that they said that even if you show this to us, still we will not believe. So they said one condition upon the other. They demanded one miracle after the other. So over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the incident that happened in history between Musa a.s. and Fir'aun. That despite the fact that Fir'aun was shown so many miracles, and his people as well were shown so many miracles, but still they did not believe. Because the one who wants to believe, the truth of the messenger is evident to him. From what? From what the messenger is saying. From the character of the messenger himself. And a person who does not wish to believe, then... Even if he is shown miracles, still he will not accept. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى Certainly we had given to Musa a.s. Tis'a, nine, ayatin, signs, meaning miracles. And these ayat were bayinat. They were clear. They were evident. They were evident in themselves. And also they clarified the truthfulness of Musa a.s. Now the question is, what are these miracles that were given to Musa a.s.? First of all, from these nine signs, was the radiant hand. The yadul bayda, the radiant hand. Secondly, it includes the asa, the rod, the staff of Musa a.s. How was that a miracle? That he threw it before Fir'aun and it turned into a snake. Similarly, when the magicians came, and they showed their magic. Musa a.s. threw his staff and it consumed all of their snakes that they had produced from their sticks and ropes. Thirdly, this includes the sinin, the years of drought, the years of famine. Because that was also a sign for Fir'aun. Because every time they were struck with a difficulty, every time they were struck with famine or something like that, they would come to Musa a.s. and they would say, remove it and we will believe. Fourthly, it includes the tufan. The flood. Fifth, it includes the jarad. What were the jarad? The locusts. Sixth, the qummal. The lice. Seventh, the fadir. Frogs. Eight, a dam. The blood. That all of the water turned into blood. And with regards to the ninth sign, there are differences of opinion. Some have said that it refers to the defeat of the magicians. Or it refers to the parting of the sea. Because Fir'aun saw that. When the sea had parted, Fir'aun came and he saw the sea parted. And he also tried to cross the sea. But others say that no. This is a part of the miracle of the Asa. So these two are what? They are a part of the miracle of the Asa. So then what is it? Some have said that it refers to the Tums. Remember Musa a.s. prayed, Itmis. Itmis ala Amwalihim that wipe off, eradicate their wealth. And others have said that it refers to Naqsuth Thamarat, the reduction, the shortage of crop of produce. So Musa a.s. was given these signs, these miracles, and through that the truthfulness of the Prophet of Allah was evident. But what happened? Fir'aun did not believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fasal, so ask, who Bani Israel, the children of Israel? Because the mushrikeen of Makkah, they would look up to the Bani Israel. And especially with regards to the matter of Prophet Wasallam, they would consult them a lot. They would repeatedly go and ask them questions. And they would tell them as to what they should ask Muhammad Wasallam. Which is why they also asked about how the Bani Israel ended up in Egypt. And as a result of that, Surah Yusuf was revealed. So if you don't believe in this, ask them. Ask the Bani Israel and they will tell you that yes, Musa a.s. was given all of these miracles. And ask them, 
specifically that is ja'ahum when he came to them when Musa alayhi salam came to the people to the Bani Israel faqala so he said lahu to him to who to Musa alayhi salam who said to Musa alayhi salam fir'aun fir'aun when Musa alayhi salam came to the people fir'aun said to him that inni la azunnuka ya Musa mas'ura indeed i surely think that you o Musa are one under the effect of magic. You are mashur. Mashur is from sihr. And mashur is first of all, someone who is under the effect of magic. Someone who is spellbound, bewitched. So we think that magic has been done upon you, which is why you are making such claims, that you are a prophet of God, or that there is another God beside me, or that these people, Bani Israel, our entire slave nation should be released and they should be allowed to go with you. You are definitely under the effect of magic. Until today, people also do that. That if they find what the other person is saying to be strange, what will they say? What will they say? Something's wrong with him. There's either a jinn or he has been spellbound. Secondly, mashur is also someone who has been taught magic. Mas'ud is also someone on whom magic has been done, meaning magic has been taught to him. So I think, Musa, that you have been taught magic, and you have become an expert magician, and on the basis of that magic, what do you want to do? You wish to destroy our entire nation, which is why he said to Musa, salam, that you have come to evict the people of this land from it. What was the response of Musa a.s.? Qala, he said, Laqad, certainly, alimta, you know, O Fir'aun, you know, that ma anzala, he did not send down, haulai, these signs, illa except Rabbu samawati wal ard. No one but the Lord of the heavens and the earth has sent these signs, has sent these miracles. And Fir'aun, you know about this very well. And especially after the defeat of the magicians, it was quite obvious that what Musa salam was doing was certainly not magic. It was definitely from someone who has authority over the heavens and the earth. So Fir'aun, you know very well that this has only been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has been sent as basair, as clear insights, as clear evidences for who? For the people. That these signs, they clarify the truth. وَإِنِّي and indeed I la أَظُنُّكَ surely I think you ya Fir'aun o Fir'aun masbura want to be destroyed Fir'aun said to Musa alayhi salam that inni la أَظُنُّكَ ya Musa mashura and Musa alayhi salam look at his confidence remember Musa alayhi salam was given sultan he was given a lot of authority and strength he was very courageous and he was given this strength by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he says to him that I think of Fir'aun that you are masbur. You are going to be destroyed. You are going to be doomed. Who is masbur? Masbur is from the root letters sabara. And subur is destruction. Da'u hunalika subura. La tad'u al-yawma suburan wahidan. Wad'u suburan kathira. So subur is destruction. And masbur, maf'ul, want to be destroyed. Want to be ruined. Want to be perished. So I think, O Fir'aun, that sooner or later you are going to be doomed. You are heading towards destruction and you are taking all your people with you towards destruction. Ibn Abbas said that Masbur is naqisul aql, meaning one who is deficient in his intellect, in his mind, in his understanding. So I think, O Fir'aun, you are not using your mind. Which is why you can't even see these clear signs. You can't even see these evident proofs. And you say this is magic. فَأَرَادَ So he intended. Who intended? Fir'aun. أَن يَسْتَفِزَّهُ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ That he should drive them out from the land. يَسْتَفِزَّ فَزَاي زَاي فَزْ And as you know that استفزز استفزاز What does it mean? It has several meanings and amongst them is to Shake something violently until it is uprooted. So he intended to uproot them, meaning to drive them out. Who does them refer to? The Bani Israel. 
including Musa alayhi salam, min al ardi from the land. How did he intend to drive them out of the land? Whereas we learn that Musa alayhi salam requested, he asked Fir'aun multiple times, let the Bani Israel go, and every time he refused. So what does it mean by this? Scholars have said that what this means is that he intended to uproot them from the surface of the earth. Meaning he intended to completely destroy the entire nation of Bani Israel. He intended to wipe them off. And in order to fulfill this plan, what did he do? He killed their sons and he kept their women alive. Fir'aun did this before Musa a.s. came and he started this again after Musa a.s. had come. So he intended to eradicate the Bani Israel from the surface of the earth. But what does Allah say? فَأَغْلَقْنَاهُ So we drowned him. وَمَنْ And whoever ma'ahu was with him jami'an all together. So what do we learn from this? What do we learn from this? That those people who try to harm others end up harming themselves. Any person who wishes to inflict harm on the other, he may be able to do so temporarily or maybe slightly, but he will not be able to ultimately harm the other person. We learn in Surah Fatir, Ayah 43, وَلَا يَحِيقُ الْمَكْرُ السَّيِّئُ إِلَّا بِأَهْلِهِ But the evil plot does not encompass except its own people. Meaning except the very people who have made that plot. So many times it happens even with children. They do something in order to scare the other person, in order to terrify them, or to harm them. But the same thing actually falls on them. They end up being the one who gets trapped into that trick. And in this incident is great comfort for the Prophet ﷺ. Because remember Surah Al-Isra was revealed towards the end of the Meccan period. Towards the very end. Because that is when the journey of Isra was. And at that time, the Prophet ﷺ was facing a lot of persecution. He knew that he won't be able to stay in this city of Makkah for very long. Which is why in the previous ayat, what did we learn? About the command of Hijrah as well. About what the Prophet ﷺ should pray for. And over here, he's being given the example of Fir'aun and Bani Israel. That how Fir'aun wished to expel the Bani Israel. But what happened? Fir'aun was expelled. He wished to kill the entire Bani Israel, the entire nation of believers. But what happened? Him and his entire people were finished. And the same thing happened with the Prophet ﷺ as well. That in Makkah, what were the people doing? They were trying to persecute the Muslims, the believers, the Prophet ﷺ, to the point that even not one of them would survive. But what happened? The tables turned completely. The Prophet ﷺ and the believers, they migrated from there. And soon, what happened? Makkah was even conquered. وَقُلْنَا And we said, مِنْ بَعْدِهِ After him. Meaning after the drowning of Fir'aun. After Fir'aun and his people were drowned. We said to who? لِبَنِي Israel. What was said to them? أُسْكُنُ الْأَرْضَ You dwell upon the earth now. You have the chance to live, to inhabit, to abide in this earth. Your enemy has been destroyed and now you are free here. Some have said that al ard the land over here, Al is of istighraq, meaning live, dwell in any land, in any place that you wish. You are free. You can live in Egypt, you can live anywhere that you wish. Why? Because you don't have an enemy now. Previously the Bani Israel were oppressed. But now once their oppressors were gone, they were free to go wherever. Secondly, some have said that Al over here is of Ahd. Meaning it's specifically referring to a particular land. And which land is this? The land of Philistine. فَإِذَا So when? جَاءَ It came. وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ The promise of the hereafter or the last promise. What's going to happen? جِئْنَا بِكُمْ We will bring all of you together. Who does all of you refer to? The Bani Israel. We will bring all of you together لَفِيفًا as groups. In one gathering, in one place. 
one assembly. What does it mean by this? فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ جِئْنَا بِكُمْ لَفِيفًا We see that Bani Israel, they were taken out from Egypt and they were told to dwell in Palestine. Or they were told to dwell wherever they wished to, wherever they wanted to. So we see that all of them, they were collected in their home country. And over here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when the final promise comes, or the promise of the hereafter comes, meaning when the day of judgment will come, then what will happen? You, O Bani Israel, will again be gathered in that same place. You again will be gathered, you again will be assembled. When? Towards the end of time. And if you think about it, today, for example, we see that the Bani Israel, they're gathering in their home country from all over the world, from various countries. They are leaving their topmost posts even in order to go and live in that country. So, jitna bikum lafifa. This is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. So, wa'dul akhira, the promise of the hereafter, it refers to the promise of the coming of the Day of Judgment towards the end of time. And this will be especially when Isa a.s. comes. This will be especially when Isa a.s. will come. Secondly, it has been said, that wa'dul akhira it refers to the promise of the hereafter meaning when the hereafter will be established when the day of judgment will come then all of you will be brought here lafifa meaning all people will be gathered up together and thirdly it has been said that wa'dul akhira the promise of the akhira it refers to the second promise of لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عُلُوًّا كَبِيرًا Where did we learn this? At the beginning of the surah. Remember we learned over there, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا When the first of the promise will happen. And with regards to the second promise, some have said this has already happened. Others have said that no, it's mentioned over here. وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ and even with regards to this, Wa'dul Akhira, some have said that this has already happened, and others say that it will happen. That when the Bani Israel will commit great fasad, then what's going to happen? All of them will be brought together. Just as they were brought together before, similarly they will all be brought together in one place. Now what does this word Lafif mean? Lafif is from the root letters Lam Fa Fa, Laf. And Laf is to wrap to fold something and it also means to attach one thing to another to layer one on top of the other laffa to join to attach one thing with the other to layer one on top of the other and lafif is used for a mixed gathering of people mixed how do you understand mixed generally when we say it's a mixed gathering what does it mean it's not segregated, meaning there are going to be men and also women. But over here, it doesn't just mean people from both genders, but what it means is from different backgrounds, different races, different countries, different ages, different eras. So, Lafif is a huge gathering of people in which there are people of different types, different backgrounds, different colors, different ages, etc. And Al-Faf from the same root, وَجَنَّاتٍ أَلْفَافًا Alfaf are gardens or you can say thick, dense forests in which trees are intertwined with each other. And generally in such forests you don't have only one type of a tree, one type of a plant. You have various types. So جِئْنَا بِكُمْ لَفِيفًا Meaning we will gather all of you together. Where? On the Day of Judgment, at Hashr or secondly, in your land. What's the point of mentioning this? Think about it. Think about the context. The Prophet ﷺ is being comforted through the example of the Bani Israel. If you look at it, the Bani Israel, they were in Egypt. Then after that, they were brought to Palestine. But before that, they were in the wilderness for a very long time, for about 40 years. And after that, the Bani Israel were constantly attacked by one nation after the other, one people after the other. Constantly there has been decline 
and also success for them. But as a result of that, they have been spread all over the earth. They have been spread all over the earth. And if you look at it, at the time of the Prophet wasallam as well, constantly the believers, they were being persecuted. So some believers, they were in Abyssinia. Some of them, they had already migrated to Medina. And some, they were still in Makkah. Similarly, we see that people from various tribes had become believers. But they could not all stay in Makkah. They would have to go back home. Because if they did, there would be a lot of trouble. And besides, you can't stay without the support of your tribe anywhere in Arabia at that time. So we see that the believers, they were all scattered. All scattered. And generally, what do we want? That all of us should be together. So through this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indirectly is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that the believers will also be united. They will also be brought together. وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ And with the truth, we have sent the Qur'an. With the truth, we have revealed the Qur'an. وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلَ And with the truth, it has descended. What does al-haq mean? That which is the truth. That which is firm which can neither be defeated, nor it can be changed, nor it can be removed. It's an established fact. It's a reality. Even if someone denies it, it doesn't make a difference to it. This is what haq is. And haq is always like this. It always has stability. It always has firmness. Which is why we see that those people who are truthful, those people who know what they're doing is truth, then what's going to happen? They're never going to leave what they are doing. No matter how much people discourage them. No matter how much people say, oh you can't do it, nobody else has done it. Wake up. This is reality. You can't function like this in this country. You can't function like this in this day and age. So many people, they read the Quran, they changed, but then afterwards they changed back. This is what people say, they discourage you. But the fact is that the one who believes that what I am doing is the truth, who is certain about it, nobody, nobody ever can discourage him. Nobody can change him. This is the reality of Al-Haqq. So, وَبِالْحَقِّ And with the truth, أَنزَلْنَاهُ We have sent down the Qur'an. What does it mean by this? That we in reality have sent it down. There is no doubt about it. This Qur'an has come down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبِالْحَقِّ And this also means that the Qur'an has been sent down with the truth, meaning containing the truth. What the Qur'an has, what the Qur'an says, is the truth. وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ And others have said that وَبِالْحَقِّ also means that we have the right. With full right we have sent down the Qur'an. It is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send the Qur'an, to send guidance to people, to offer guidance to people. So, وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلَ And with the truth, it has also descended. Meaning, the angel Jibreel has come down with the Qur'an. It's not that Allah sent something else and something else has come down to the people. No. Allah has sent down the truth and the same truth has descended. If you notice the two words, أَنزَلْنَاهُ and نَزَلَ Same root, but there is a slight difference. أَنزَلَ we sent it down and nazala it came down so we sent down the truth and the truth in reality has come down the angel Jibreel has only brought the truth wama and not arsalnaka we have sent you illa mubashiran wa nadira except as a bearer of good news and also as a one so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being reassured over here that what has come to you is the truth what has come to you, there is no doubt about it. It is free of any errors. It is free from any faults. It is free from any changes. Exactly how Allah sent it, that is how you have received it. Because many times, it's possible that you send something, but the one who receives it, gets it in a different way than you had sent it. Somebody else had made changes to it. But we see that this is not possible with the Qur'an. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent who? To deliver the Qur'an to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sent Angel Jibreel. And Angel Jibreel is who? Nazala bihi ruhul amin, The very trustworthy angel. 
So the Prophet is being given confidence that this is the truth, hold on to it, and take it on. And this is the belief that we should also have. This is a conviction that we should also have in the Quran. And if we have this conviction, then nobody can change us. Nobody can say, okay, so you've changed back now. Nobody can discourage us. وَقُرْآنًا and Quran فَرَقْنَاهُ We have separated it. Meaning, وَآتَيْنَا قُرْآنًا And we have given a Quran to you. And this Quran فَرَقْنَاهُ Meaning, we have separated it in terms of its revelation. We have separated it in terms of its revelation. The Qur'an was not revealed in its entirety in one go. How was it revealed? In parts. And it was revealed over a period of 23 years. So فَرَقْنَاهُ We have separated it, we have divided it with regards to its revelation. And others have said that فَرَقْنَاهُ What it means is that we have detailed it. We have explained it to you, part after part. One concept after the other. One thing has been clarified from the other. One detail has been made distinct from the other. فَرَقْنَاهُ We have detailed it. We have explained it. Why? لِتَقْرَأَهُ So that you can recite it. عَلَى nasi Upon the people. عَلَى muksin Upon a prolonged period. Muks is from the root letters Meem Kafsa. And Makatha is to stay in wait for something. For a long time. Like for example, you're waiting for somebody to come back. They said, please wait here, I'll be back in a few minutes. So you're waiting over there. But you're waiting for a long time. Musa a.s. when he was traveling with his wife, he saw the fire on the mountain. And he said to his wife, Um kusu, stay here and I'll go and I'll check what's over there. Perhaps I can get some guidance if there are people. So he said to his wife, Um kusu. So makatha is to stay in wait for someone or something. And from this the word muks is also used for intervals or stages. Because it is to pause while waiting for something, to stop time and again in wait for something. So we have sent the Qur'an, we have revealed it in parts, in intervals. Why? So that you can recite the Qur'an to the people Ala muksin, meaning you can recite the Quran over a long period of time. Not that somebody can come, and in three days they can come and memorize the entire Quran from you and go back, and they never have to come again. No, we see that the Sahaba, those who believed, they would constantly come, repeatedly, again and again, and they would learn more and more Quran from the Prophet ﷺ. Why is it necessary to spend a long time in learning the Quran, in listening to the Quran? Why do you think so? Because the Qur'an is supposed to bring a change within you. And it's not possible that you listen to something within three days, you learn something within three days, and you expect that you will change completely according to what you have learned. You see, there is a difference between taking a course over two years and taking a crash course of just one month. Isn't there a difference? There's a huge difference. What you learn over two or three years, you become very good at it. And something that you learn overnight, you will know it for that time, but very soon you'll forget. It won't bring a change in you. It won't really increase you. When you learn something over a prolonged period of time, you tend to come over the same concepts again and again, repeatedly. And it's possible that you read something once, you took only one lesson from it. But the next time you come across something similar to it, you will learn another concept from it. So this is the reason why the Qur'an was revealed in parts. So that the Qur'an would be recited to the people over a prolonged period of time. Because it's not possible for people to learn within moments and then bring about a change that is permanent. وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ And we have sent it down. Meaning we have gradually sent down the Qur'an. How? Tanzila, a gradual revelation. The Qur'an has been sent down gradually. Not entirely at once. We learn in the Qur'an that the mushrikeen of Makkah, they used to doubt the truthfulness of the Prophet ﷺ because of the fact that revelation would come to him time after time. And the Qur'an was not given to him at once. 
وقال الذين كفروا لولا نزل عليه القران جمله واحده that those who disbelieve they say why was the quran not revealed to him all at once allah says kadhalika linuthabbita bihi fu'adaka wa rattalnahu tartila thus it is that we may strengthen thereby your heart and we have spaced it distinctly so what do we learn from this ayah that the reason behind revealing the quran part after part was to strengthen the heart of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because when you spend a long time with something only then you begin to get used to it you get to be comfortable with it and the quran what does it do it does a lot of counseling so the more you spend time with the quran the longer what happens your heart becomes more and more confident and also the quran was revealed according to situations according to situations so whenever the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in a particular situation revelation was sent regarding that then that would make his heart very firm and you may have noticed that when you're going through something and you find the answer that day in the lesson you remember it and it helps you whereas if you weren't going through that experience and you learned the same ayah the same lesson it would not affect you as much so this is the reason why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the quran gradually